Hello everyone, welcome back. So this video is going to be about debugging in Kubernetes. I'll be using a tool called Kind, which can be used to create Kubernetes cluster locally. So it, it can be used for development purpose, or if you just want to play around or learn Kubernetes, then you can use Kind tool. I have already shown how you can install it and create a single node or multi node cluster. So you can watch that video. And in this particular video, I'm going to use kind and will help you to understand how you can debug Kubernetes related errors. So I have already installed kind. So I can just run kind hyphen hyphen help and it will show me all the options. And to install it, you can simply run brew install kind. So this will simply install the tool kind and you can create cluster. You can run the command kind create cluster and give it a name. Let's give the name debugging and this will create the cluster for you. So as expected, so it requires Docker because it is going to create Kubernetes nodes in the form of Docker container. So we need to have Docker running. So let me just run it. Okay, so we now have Docker running. Let's create the cluster again. So it's just getting the image for the node and then it's preparing the node and writing the configuration and it will start the control plane and it will automatically set the Kubernetes context for this cluster. Okay, so kubectl cluster info context kind debugging. So this is the name of our cluster. Let's run kubectl get nodes and as you can see this is running a node and let's run kubectl get pods. So as of now no pods are running. So this is how you can create a cluster using kind tool. So now let's talk about debugging in Kubernetes. For that, I suggest you to have Kubernetes API reference. So this is a superb documentation from Kubernetes where it gives all the API overview. For example, if you want to have container, so this is the group and the version used for the kind container. So all objects in Kubernetes is represented with kind and this is particularly for the container. And suppose if you want to create a cron job, then the kind will be cron job in manifest and it's a group and version will be this. And it will tell you like what all fields you should have for this kind of object. For example, you need to have a API version specified. You need to specify kind metadata spec and the cron job specification v1 batch requires these fields. So what this particular documentation is helping us is about understanding what all things are required under which API version and group so that when you are writing manifest file or you are debugging an existing object, you can go over the manifest and see if any required thing is missing or if you have any typos or misconfiguration for any of the field. So this will be handy. Another thing is Another helpful resource within Kubernetes documentation is kubectl cheat sheet. So this is a cheat sheet or list of commands of kubectl, which is very handy while debugging or while writing your CK exam, CK exam or CKS exam, or even while developing or playing with the cluster. So these two documentation will be very handy. So I have list down some common errors that you can get in Kubernetes cluster. One of them is image pull back off. So this error image pull back off may happen due to invalid image name or invalid tag or maybe due to invalid permission. So suppose when you are deploying a Kubernetes object, maybe deployment pod or stateful set, which requires an image and you are giving a wrong image name or maybe the tag is wrong. It might be possible that you have put your Docker image into a private registry and the Kubernetes cluster doesn't have access to that registry. So in that case, you can get image pull back off error. So let's try to create a deployment, say kubectl, create deployment with name nginx and image as nginx. And let's watch the pod, kubectl get pods hyphen w. So it is trying to create the container. 
the container is running now so we have this pod kubectl get pods and it is up and running and if we describe this pod so we get these events successfully assigned to this particular node and it is now pulling the image and it has successfully pulled and it is creating the container and then it started the container so these are the series of event that happened when we created this deployment now let's try to edit this kubectl edit deploy nginx so let's just change the name of this image and I'm just going to put it nginx to no nginx and let's save this and let's just watch the pods kubectl get pods hyphen w so two minutes ago it was running and the id of the pod as you can see this is different now it is trying to create another pod with different id and for this particular one it is giving an error image pull and finally we get the error image pull back off and if we just describe this kubectl describe pod nginx so in this we can see error image pull and here it is giving the error fail to resolve reference no nginx latest pull access denied repository does not exist or may require authorization now let's talk about the next common error that you can face it is related to image is successfully pulled but the pod is in pending state so this may happen due to resource quota or namespace issue the Kubernetes nodes may lack resources or there may be issue with cube scheduler component so we'll see how we can find out what exactly the issue could be so what exactly a resource quota means in Kubernetes suppose we have a production grade Kubernetes cluster where we can have enough resources available enough resources as in we have ample amount of nodes available and each node have say 30 GB of RAM or 8 core CPUs and our Kubernetes resource or pods is very lightweight and can run on the node freely. So this is a very good scenario where we are limited with the resources. But suppose there is a development environment and there is a development Kubernetes cluster where devs are trying to deploy their application on Kubernetes. And since it is a dev cluster, the resources will be very limited. There might be you no know, four core CPU per node and only four GB of RAM. In that case, if your application requires eight GB of memory, then Kubernetes will not be able to schedule the pod on that particular node because your pod requires more resources and the node doesn't have that much of resources. Now what is namespace? So namespace is just a logical separation. For example, we have a network and that private network have a particular range of IPs and we want application servers to have a separate range of IP which we can define it in a subnet and then we can have another subnet which will have database related servers. So in this case, we are separating these different set of servers using subnets within the same network. So we are separating them logically. Similarly, in Kubernetes, within a cluster, if we want to segregate certain resources, Kubernetes resources based on certain things, for example, Kubernetes has a namespace called Kube system. Within this Kube system, all the Kubernetes related or Kubernetes owned kind of resources will be running. So let's check this kubectl get ns. ns is for namespace. So as you can see, there is a default namespace. So anything if you run without specifying the namespace will go into default namespace. And then there is another one called cube system. So all the Kubernetes related resources will go in cube system namespace. So let's run the command kubectl get all hyphen capital A. So this will list all the resources within the cluster in all the namespaces. And if you don't specify hyphen a option, it will simply list the resources within default namespace. So as you can see, the nginx pod that we created is under default namespace and core DNS is Kubernetes object and it is in cube system namespace. So in this way, we can aggregate resources within Kubernetes cluster. So suppose we want to have certain pods or daemon set running for monitoring purpose. So we can create a namespace called monitoring and we will create all those daemon set or pods in that namespace and we will provide certain permission to those resources so that they can check certain things in other namespace. 
so by default resources in one namespace will not be able to see or access the resources in the other namespace so let's create a namespace kubectl create ns and let's give this namespace the name debug now if i do kubectl get ns so we will be able to see this debug namespace here now what we are going to do is we are going to simply allocate a resource quota to this namespace so this namespace will have limited cpu limited memory and if you want to create a pod within this namespace and the pod specification is higher than the resource quota then that pod will not get scheduled on this one so let's see how we can create a resource quota so now i'm going to create a resource quota This YML can be generated through ChatGPT or you can look through in the documentation also and you can just say like I want a resource quota with a hard limit of 1 CPU and 1 GB of RAM and copy this and paste it here. So let's save this one. Now we will apply this kubectl apply resource quota and I want to apply this in debug namespace. Okay, I forgot hyphen F option. Okay, the resource code has been created. Now let's try to create the deployment. kubectl create deployment nginx with image nginx. And last time this worked. Now we will do a different thing this time. We will specify the namespace as debug. And let's hit enter. It will say deployment created so let's describe this or let's watch the pod kubectl get pod hyphen w so as you can see it is giving the pods of default namespace let's try to get the pod kubectl get pods and let's try to get it from the debug namespace because we have created the deployment in debug namespace it says no resources found so right now no pods are created but we just created a deployment so let's try to get the deployment so kubectl get deploy nginx hyphen n debug so here is our deployment but as you can see this is not yet ready so zero pod out of one is ready now something has went wrong now how we will understand like what has gone wrong so let's try to describe this kubectl describe deploy nginx and obviously we need to specify the namespace argument so as you can see there is a replica failure so it failed to create the pod but here it's not showing us the information like what has gone wrong so we need to understand another concept in kubernetes and that important concept is events so there is a kubectl command for that so in kubernetes everything that is happening be it pod creation or deletion or anything if we are attaching any resources to a namespace or any sort of events that are happening within kubernetes so all those are recorded within kubernetes and there is a command for that so let's go to kubectl cheat sheet and here look for events so this is the command which list events sorted by timestamp so we can just copy this one and let's try to run this on our cluster let's run this command so as you can see this is the error when we were trying to deploy the image with wrong image name so this is downwards this was some times ago and after that let's scroll up and let's try to see the latest messages so latest event that has happened is about node has sufficient memory and if you run the command kubectl describe deploy nginx hyphen and debug we also get event details here in this section where it is trying to do scaling and we don't see related error messages here so here with this command we will get all the events that has happened and we will see all the errors here as well whether it is warning or normal or there is any issue with the image name so you can get all these kind of information from this command now the next error is crash loop back off so crash loop back off is an error which you can get if there is any liveness probe failure 
So your pod may have a liveness probe. So liveness probe is a specification within Kubernetes manifest that can be used to check health of the application. And if that passes within the given period of time, then it is considered as healthy pod. Otherwise, it is not considered as a healthy pod. So how to identify this? In this case, there will not be any error related to pulling of the Docker image. Rather, the image will be pulled successfully. But when it is starting the container, the application may have sudden issues which may cause container to not start successfully. So if we check kubectl get pods. So we have these two running one with the wrong image name and one with the correct image name. So what I'm going to do is I'll simply write a Docker file. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the latest Nginx image and I'm copying a test.asset script and then changing a user to 1001 and I'm using a command to execute test.asset script. So when I'll use this image in my pod, it will be able to download the image and it will try to start the container but while starting it will try to change the user to a non-root user and it will try to run that script. So this user will not have access to slash etc folder and because of that it will simply crash and the pod or deployment will stuck in crash loop back of error. So this error is mostly comes when there is a runtime issue. So these are sudden general error which you can face while administrating a Kubernetes cluster.